Hello, hello everyone. Now, in case you guys hadn't noticed, you are actually able to test the submarines on the public test server right now. All you need to do is download the public test server client and patch it, which is probably going to take a while, especially if you haven't done it. But then you will get to play the new upcoming Horror of the Deeps uh, Halloween mission. This is the latest one of the three Halloween missions. Board Gaming likes to do this every year. We had Saving Transla Transylvania, we had Sunray in the Darkness, and now we have this horror thing, which is entirely submarine based. And the idea here is, of course, to see how, peop how players adapt to using the submarines, and of course, for you guys to see how much you enjoy testing them. It's very arcadey, of course, just like these uh, Halloween events always are. Like, the, sh the ships handle extremely quickly, they reload extremely fast, and the concealment is absurd, and blah 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 blah. So in terms of balance, uh, obviously you shouldn't be looking at really anything. Uh, but it does give you an idea. It does give you a feeling of how these subs operate. Now, of course, when I do things like this, I tend to be quite thorough. So, the first submarine we have here is the Barracuda. This has the strongest secondaries of them all, and I actually ended up specking manual secondaries on this thing, because when you surface, focusing your secondaries do actually, does actually do a surprising amount of damage to these DDs that try to do drop death charges on you. Um, you can't really destroy the ballistas, well you can if you waste a lot of time doing it, but usually it's not worth the time. The Barracuda submarine is the default submarine you're given right from the get-go. You don't have to do anything besides log, on, log in on PTS and this submarine will be right there waiting for you. Um, it's pretty middle of the pack in every single way. You can only sit one minute underwater before you have to surface. There's uh, like an oxygen timer, you can see the depth uh, on the left of my submarine, uh, you use E and Q, you can rebind those keys, you use those keys to control how deep the sub goes. Uh, I've been a bit disappointed that there's not really much point in going uh, much deeper than basically just below the surface. But in general you can see I started getting focus fired, so I emerged emergency dive to periscope diff, and my concealment pretty much gets cut in half. And at this range you also launch your torps. If you launch them from the surface you get a very widespread, uh, if you launch them at periscope depth, you get this single, quite narrow, accurate uh, torpedoes that you can use. You can of course go deeper, but you can see the timer now ticking down on the left part there. That's my oxygen that's steadily going down. Now, the Barracuda is more than enough to complete this horror mission on the normal difficulty. And if you do complete this mission on the normal difficulty with five stars, you unlock a second submarine. You unlock the Sea Love. Sea Love? Not entirely sure how you're supposed to pronounce it. Um, this one has a bit more in the, the torpedo reload business in, this, in the sense that it has three different launchers and they all reload individually. So you it can put up a lot more, put out a lot more burst than you could with the Barracuda. Uh, I think this one was slightly slower. But on the other hand, it can be 1 minute and 40 seconds underwater. So, stealthier and able to stay hidden for a longer time and with a better burst, but in return it is significantly slower. And speed is actually surprisingly important in this mission. You spawn at the bottom left corner and you see you have a bunch of objectives. You need to kill a bunch of ships, 15 on normal, 20 on hard. You need to scout a bunch of catapults. 14 on normal, I think it was 17 on hard, and then you need to scout the tower. Uh, you can see it's you can see it on the minimap. It has a little crosshair on it. It's in the top right corner of the minimap. You have to go scout that tower, and you have to sink uh, Rasputin. Those are the objectives of this mission, and of course, three subs need to survive. So. This was actually surprisingly difficult with the submarines we had available. Uh, the fundamental issue is that uh, you need to scout the tower. You have a timer. You can't see the timer right now, but you have, you have a very tight timer on hard mode uh, where you have to scout the tower very, very quickly, and you also have to scout all those catapults. There's, there are catapults hidden in the very far top right corner of the map, so you have to basically send ships up there to scout them. 
And the fundamental issue with both this uh, Sea Love and the Barracuda was that neither was really fast enough to be able to scout all the things that needed to be scouted. So what we ended up doing was we ended started completing the other missions. Uh, the first one we actually completed was Saving Transylvania, the 2016 Halloween event. You rem if you guys remember the one where you had to escort uh, the Transylvania through basically this Halloween territory and you had to escort it all the way to a gate and make sure it never stopped and stayed moving. You need to get five stars in that mission. If you do though, you will unlock the Zipper submarine. The Zipper is probably the sing single most fun uh, sub out of every single one in the event. It is amazingly agile. It is absolutely ridiculously agile. Even though you, you can only stand, stay 50 seconds underwater before your oxygen runs out, the, sh the sub is so incredibly agile that you can literally bob up to the water, quickly refill your oxygen and then bob right back underneath the surface again. Very, very quickly and easily avoid any incoming fire. It's amazingly agile. Um, and but it does give up a lot for it. It has only two sets of torps, and they uh, and unlike the other subs, you can't stack them. Meaning in the other subs, if you don't launch any torps for a while, uh, it reloads multiple tubes. So when you do finally start launching, you can launch several with a very small delay. Uh, the, nothing like that for the zipper. It only has the two launchers, and that's it. And then you have to wait the full duration. Also, it's very slow. Uh, something like 24 knots so even though this handles like a god and it's a ton of fun and very agile and all of these things it's also very small so quite hard to hit it up but the small health pool kind of uh, reflects that even though it has all of these things though it's not very good for the hard mode uh, because we kept running into the same issues with the hard mode when we tried it and that's fundamentally that you being stealthy was good but you need a lot of speed you really need a lot of speed to get all the scouting done and ideally even though the zipper could probably make it if just ignoring all the enemies just charging there uh, the zipper could probably make it all the way to the end quite quickly it's still hampered by its own speed and the lack of armament is also an issue when it comes to actually dealing with the enemy ships because you do need to kill them on the way especially in hard mode you can't just ignore all the mobs uh, as tempting as it sounds so we realized, well, we, we weren't going to get the mission done on hard with this one. We needed some, we wanted to check out the final fourth submarine. And for this one, we did, we did the sun ray in the darkness. That's the 2017 uh, Halloween event. It follows up the original Transylvania event where you escort the ship to the portal. Uh, uh, in the 2017 event, um, you basically, you defend that portal. The ships come out, you defend them, and then you have to basically defend these towers as the portal slowly closes and you need to get five stars in that mission as well but if you do complete complete it with five stars then you get access to an insanely fun and insanely fast submarine called the Jur Falcon. The Jur Falcon has a bit of a weird torpedo setup. Uh, you launch your freezing torp, uh, that's your disabling, it basically stuns the enemy. Uh, you launch your disabling torps from the front, but your two damaging torpedo launchers are actually at the back of your ship and you launch them backwards. So in the beginning uh, we were kind of trying, like I was, I was trying this, maybe uh, you need to rush them or like disable them and then turn around and use your damaging torps and like all kinds of uh, trickery and stuff but ultimately the best way to actually deal damage was to just stun them and then just yolo past them and torpedo backwards as you keep sailing on and the thing with the Jura Falcon is, which you probably have noticed in the comparison already, is that it's insanely fast. It does well over 30 knots, it doesn't really lose any speed in the turns, um, it handles just great diving and surfacing and so forth. It can even be 1 minute and 30 seconds underwater, which is very close to uh, the Sea Love's 1 minute 40. So this combination of speed and underwater and just raw firepower, especially backwards, was exactly what we needed. And suddenly uh, this hard mode version of this horror event became ridiculously easy as soon as we unlocked this submarine. Uh, because, well, you need to scout the tower 
I mentioned that there was a crosshair where the tower is, you need to scout it. And it's actually a bit weird that you can't scout it from the surface. You have to basically go right next to it deep underwater and you will scout the tower while it's still underwater before it's risen up from the water. So that took so that took a bit of figuring out because uh, before that the only way we could scout, scout the tower was after we killed uh, Rasputin. Because when you kill him, the tower rises from the water. So we always thought we had to kill him fast. But actually, you can bypass that thing by just going deep underwater and scouting the tower before it's even risen. And of course, having access to do two Jura Falcons also made it so much easier to scout all those catapults installations. Um, because, well, now you had a ship speed enough to actually make it all the way to the back of the islands and then easily make it back and kill him. So this ship... For hard mode, it makes it 10 times easier. It made it so so much easier. We could, we could clear hard mode with like 4 stars, but getting the 5 stars, uh, as soon as you unlock the Jera Falcon, it just became ridiculously easy. So, highly recommend doing it. Uh, I don't know if it, it'll be the same on live as it is on PTS, but on PTS we needed to complete Sun Ray in the Darkness with 5 stars to unlock this submarine. Now, how exactly do you get 5 stars in this mode, on hard mode? Well, honestly, I would say 2 Jera Falcons and then just some hard-hitting torpedo boats like the Barracuda or um, like the Barracuda or the Sea Love. Those would be, those are the highest DPM torp boats. Um, the Zipper, while it's fun, it's kind of outclassed by the Jera Falcon in every single way. So two Jera Falcons and then just the rest just damage. Jera Falcon's job is to just rush ahead. As you can see actually on the minimap, you can probably see those two Jera Falcons that are rushing from the left flank. They are just basically speeding through, torping backwards, and their job is to scout the tower, and then later on scout all the catapult installations on the in the top right corner of the map. And once that is done, uh, they can bring their damage. They can come back and help kill Transylvania, or Rasputin, sorry. So... That's how you get 5 stars very easily and very quickly in this mode, uh, especially in the hard mode. Once you complete the hard mode with 5 stars, sadly you don't unlock any more submarines, so there's only 4 available in this, in this mode. But it was still fun, and it did give you some... It took some getting used to, but once you get used to the whole diving underneath, diving under torps and so, so forth, um, it was actually pretty fun. My, bi my biggest issue right now with this mode is though that uh, there's not really any point in diving deep underwater. There's really nothing there. There's some big like underwater animals there, um, but I, did, they never did anything and they were kind of just scenery. And uh, there was never any reason to dive especially deep uh, besides for scouting the tower. So not really, not really seeing the point. I mean... I understand you're just trying the mechanic, and I guess in the live game there might be more death charges, which might make it more important to go deeper. But I would have liked to see, especially the concealment, vary depending on depth. Because right now, uh, you have the same concealment at periscope depth as you do at pretty much the bottom of the ocean, which doesn't seem to make much sense to me. Um, it is a fun mode though, and if you guys want to try some new controls and just try out the new arcade mode, you can try it on PTS. Or alternatively, you can just wait for this thing to hit the live servers, since this is a Halloween event, so it will absolutely be hitting the live servers as well. But, but yeah, easy 5 stars, 2 Jura Falcons, and then four Barracudas or Sea Loves or any mix of those. The Jura Falcons rush ahead and scout everything. The, ship, the U boats that come after kill everything in their way. Um, pretty simple. Still, though, fun event. I hope you guys enjoyed this little preview of it, and I will talk to you guys later.